So if you've taken physics in high school or college or if you're taking them, you're probably well acquainted with classical mechanics. And a point which I want to make is that classical mechanics deals with objects which are approximately the same size as us, right? Everyday objects. And due to this, it's very intuitive. There might be some aspects of it which are very hard to grasp, but overall it's a pretty intuitive field. But when we go into um, smaller scales, it's a totally different ball game, and it can become very non-intuitive, but it's a very challenging and exhilarating field, and this is quantum mechanics. Now in this video, I want to explain um, one aspect of the development of quantum mechanics, which is the realization that in some scenarios, it seems like light is not a wave, but um, comprised of a bunch of photons or particles of light. And this was shown in two main revelations, which was Planck working with um, black body radiation and Einstein working on the photoelectric effect. So let's get started. Uh, in classical mechanics, the theory which uh, light was the, the theory of light was the Maxwellian theory in which light was a wave and um, double slit interference, which you've probably heard of, and um, Basically, most scenarios were explained by light being a wave, but not all of them. And it's these few scenarios which sowed the seeds of um, quantum mechanics, those very few scenarios. And one of them was black body radiation. Now, an ideal black body is um, an object which absorbs 100% of the light which hits it. Uh, it doesn't reflect any light, it's perfectly black. And this is useful for studying black body radiation, which is the electromagnetic radiation, the light given off by an ideal black body, which does, so it won't have any light, which is caused by light hitting it. It'd just be from something intrinsic to the object, like temperature. And uh, the theory, which was for black body radiation, which was based on um, Maxwell's theory, is the Rayleigh Jeans law, and if and according to it, if you plot um, the intensity of radiation by the wavelength, uh, you get something like this. And you might notice it looks something like this, and you might notice that there's a problem. If we set the wavelength equal to zero, so basically there's no light and it's thermal equilibrium, you have infinite radiation. This doesn't make sense. An object which is basically at rest thermodynamically having giving off infinite radiation? This doesn't make sense. So this is one place where Maxwell's theory fails. And Max Planck said it to himself to um, solve the problem. And he found that if you made the frequency of the light not be anything, it can't just be any random number, but it can only be integer values of something called Planck's constant, which is denoted with a lowercase h and equals, um, s according to experimental evidence, 6.6 .6 times 10 to the negative 34 joules times seconds. If you say that the frequency can only be uh, in integer values of h, it, fix it fixes the data. And what this effectively means is that we're quantizing light. Light is in a wave. It's made out of particles of light called photons. So this is effectively like saying um, the frequency can be, can't be be anything, can only be integer values of h. This is like saying if you're counting billiard balls, it can't be um, three and a half billiard balls or something like that. It has to be certain whole billiard balls. It can't be a half or a quarter. And uh, this, this didn't make sense according to the tradition of the time, but it worked. And the curve, the new curve, looks like this. And the curve actually depends on the temperature. So if I had a lower temperature, the kind of uh, slope of it would be less. And this is Planck's law. And another thing which you get from Planck's law is that uh, fairly intuitively, the energy of the photon equals Planck's constant times the frequency. 
pretty simple. Now, p most people thought that, yeah, this is a nice mathematical trick, um, but of course light is a wave. It can't be anything else. So they thought that maybe some better theory would come out later, which actually described the real world. But then something happened. The photoelectric effect was solved. And let's talk about that. Um, so the photoelectric effect is uh, the observance that for some metals, um, so we have a metal, if it was hit with certain frequencies of ultraviolet light, um, UV light, then electrons would uh, fly out of it. And no one could really figure out why, and let's delve into this a little bit more. Let's see why it seemed to violate um, the Maxwellian theory. Um, the Let's do this. We have the metal. We have the UV light hitting it. And the electrons go in a circuit. And in the circuit we have a capacitor which is causing a potential which we're going to cause which we're going to call the stopping potential or the stopping voltage V0 and the idea is that it's going to stop the electrons in the tracks they're going to get rid of all of their kinetic energy and we have an ammeter which is going to measure um, the um, amount of electrons in a sense so what you find is that if the electrons are stopped, then the energy of the electrons are um, the charge of the electron, which is a constant, times V0. Makes sense. And um, you'll find another thing, which is that uh, there is a minimum frequency of the UV light which will emit the electrons, which will cause the electrons to come out. and this is F0, which is a threshold frequency. And um, the problem which violates ma the Maxwellian theory is that it see if you do the experiments, the stopping voltage is independent of the intensity of the light used. So the amount of energy it takes to stop the light is independent of the intensity of the light. And this doesn't work in our traditional framework. So Einstein, in 1905, he says he has a solution, and he says that if we say that light is photons, and photons which are basically the same as what Planck used, um, then it solves the problem. And the image here is that uh, it's like billiard balls now. The photons are really knocking the electrons out. So that's very useful, and it kind of creates an elegant picture, where if we graph the kinetic energy, the maximum kinetic energy of the um, electrons, max Ke, and um, you find parallel lines, and each line is a different metal, so it's an intrinsic pro property of the metal, and the slope is um, Oh yeah, and by the way, incidentally, this is graphing against frequency. And if you find the, if you look at the um, slope, the, we call it Ke max over F, which is the frequency which we're talking about. So for example, we have some arbitrary frequency here, minus F0, and F0 would be the, um, the threshold frequency is the one where there's no kinetic energy, right? Because that is the very one which causes, which is the minimum amount of frequency which you need for the electrons to get knocked out. So this would be the slope, right? You find that the slope equals Planck's constant. So for every metal, the slope is the same, but it'll have different x and y intercepts. And um, there is another useful equation which you can get from turning this around which is that uh, the maximum kinetic energy equals um, Planck's constant times the frequency minus um, Planck's constant times the frequency, the threshold frequency and um, 
Planck's constant times the threshold frequency is often labeled a work function, and um, the work function is often denoted with psi. This is a very useful equation, and um, another elegant thing which arises from this picture is that the y-intercept of the line is the work function. So, now we have a contradiction. It seems like there are certain cases where pho photons are the way to go. These are the only things which seem to solve the problem. And you um, have other cases like the um, double slit experiment where it seems like waves are the only option. And um, to give you a little kind of heads up for what happens, there's something called a de Broglie wavelength which relates the wavelength of the light when it's a wave to the momentum, the actual P of the um, photons. And um, this, arise, this causes the arising of the idea of the, the um, wave particle duality, where objects in the quantum world can be waves and particles at the same time. So, thanks for watching.